both uh, large scale and for more specific industrial sectors. So, so, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, everyone, and thank you to be here. Um, so, um, I will present you yeah, the, the design of the of the head, uh, which uh, you print the, the, the concrete, and uh, it's a part of a work package tree. As uh, such, actually, um, many things that you uh, that are my my boundary co condition already have been. Uh, talked by my, my colleagues. Uh, in uh, this work, we need uh, a very strong uh, emphasis uh, with the, for the collaboration with uh, our partners. First of all, uh, we are going to print Lafarge concrete, which Marjorie already talked a lot uh, about it. Uh, also, uh, um, uh, also we, we have to do printing using the cable robot of Mark which also gives uh, a lot of freedom and also a lot of constraints. And uh, last but not least, we uh, work a lot with, uh, with Estia because we have to share two things, a control environment and also the, the place in the robot, uh, with, which is uh, not necessarily an easy thing because we do very different uh, uh, actions and uh, our shapes are, are really different. So, uh, we are going to mix a B component material, which means that uh, it's uh, a very not complicated uh, recipe because it's only two elements, but we have to be able to mix it in the right quantity and continuously, which is, uh, in terms of control, always a challenge. Uh, so the main material is uh, the UHPC uh, concrete, uh, which is uh, the material that we use in most of the printing. But we also have demonstrated and printed the C60 uh, compound, uh, which is uh, much uh, much cheaper. It uh, works with the uh, with the robot, but it has also another constraint. So this is why we, we choose to print the demonstrator with the with the UHPC. Uh, and uh, so the form of the uh, of all this uh, additive plat will be an interchangeable uh, platform. So uh, this uh, shell actually is uh, gets just after the the patented chain that uh, that uh, Marjorie have shown, and it's our interpretation in uh, real terms of speed of motors and pump of uh, the mix uh, needed by, uh, by Lafarge. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you see, we have uh, a very big pump, first of all, a, um, a progressive cavity pump, which is commonly used in, uh, uh, in the construction sector in order to, um, to, uh, to pump concrete. But uh, we have to use it in a way suited to additive manufacturing, which means a precise control of the doses for having the correct mix and also in order to put the right amount of concrete in the right place. And uh, this uh, main uh, primary pump uh, has to work with another pump, much smaller, which uh, will uh, add the additive. And it has to, to be uh, fully um, uh, compatible with the, with the concrete element. And this is not an, really an easy thing because we have from one side uh, uh, something that pumps liters of concrete by minutes, several liters with, uh, with big grain size elements, and another one which uh, the range is about milliliters per minute. So we have to be in one side very precise and small, and the other side very precise but big. Uh, so the choice was the peristaltic pump for, for the extrusion, and um, no, the progressive cavity pump for the, for the extrusion, and the peristaltic pump for the additive, uh, which are both volumetric, uh, volumetric systems, which allows us to get sure that we have the right quantity mixed. Um, all, all of these get mixed in a dynamic mixer, 
And we have censored all the, the system. We are going to see the chart afterwards uh, in order to try to have an idea of what's happening in, uh, in, this, um, in this system. Because as you are going to see, it's pretty alive. Uh, and uh, actually, it's the, the, the mixing of the concrete is dependent uh, on, um, on very, very factors. And most of uh, you, the, the, the ones who work in the, in the construction sectors, knows that in making concrete, there is usually always someone looking if there is the right <laughs> consistency at the end, if it's really correctly mixed, and how it looks. Uh, it's something, of course, there is automated plants, but uh, uh, normally there is always, at the end, when you are pouring, you are looking at what you are pouring. And in this case, we cannot do it. So. Uh, now I will present you the main parts of the of the design. I will try to get quick because I think I'm getting too long already. Uh, so this is uh, the main pump. Uh, so it's the bigger part and uh, the bigger part of the additive platform, <laughs> and uh, it's um, uh, so it's based in a, a motor system which pump uh, some concrete which is located in the in the tank and through uh, a normal uh, commercial progressive uh, cavity pump. Uh, we are going to go back afterwards in the shapes of the, the tank, which is very, very special. Uh, second, it's uh, the, the dynamic mixer, which uh, basically uh, is, uh, it has nothing different that, than a traditional uh, mixer, which can be bought commercially. The only problem is that we have a weight issue and everything there, it's uh, very shaped like an aeronautic uh, part a bit because we were hunting for each grams of, of materials. So basically, uh, we have uh, an infill for the additive and another one for the, for the mortar. Uh, everything is mixed inside and uh, is located with a head uh, which uh, give, the, give back the, the concrete with the, with the, 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 the good shape. I, we, as a uh, we are uh, an, um, a company very centered on additive manufacturing, and we have access uh, to a lot of uh, 3D printing uh, on additive manufacturing solutions. So you are going to see that in these uh, designs, we make a, we made a, a wide use of additive manufacturing, not in printing this concrete part, but also to make the the the, the, the actuator. So. Uh, last but not least, the auxiliary pump, uh, which is just the tank uh, which uh, holds the additive, um, which uh, will increase the setting time of the concrete. We also have made time with the um, tixotropic uh, accelerator, but um, uh, it works. Uh, but we, it's more, more. It, uh, it's more vicious, a bit more than the, if you allow me. Uh, than the accelerator because uh, the change of, uh, of pressure is very quick. So um, in most of the parts we have used uh, not a tixotropic uh, agent but uh, an ac uh, a setting accelerator. So now I want, I think I, I would like to, to explain all the parts in detail because uh, it has been a very long work but I'm just uh, going to, uh, to explain some details about, uh, about the design, uh, the mechanical design, which I think are interesting. First of all, the structure design. As I already mentioned like two or three times, uh, the weight was one of our main concern uh, during the, the designs of this actuator. So we have made a wide uh, use of uh, carbon fibers on different composite materials. Uh, and uh, this structure is not an uh, exception. So it's basically made of uh, mostly plastic unions and uh, um, carbon, uh, carbon fiber tubes. And uh, first of all, well, we had to make uh, quite a bit of uh, FIA analysis uh, in order to get sure that it has the right resistance because uh, for the ones of you which we are used to work with uh, composite element, composite element don't uh, tell you before they are going to crack. When they crack, they crack. So it's something that uh, you, you cannot expect to have a visible deformation in the, in the parts before having a total breakout. Uh, so this is why we have made a, a lot of calculation. Also, uh, we have a 
another problem uh, in, uh, in the design. And is we have for one side a big pump, which pump a lot of concrete very quick, which means a lot of vibration. But we want uh, to make the deposition the more accurate as possible, which means that uh, we need to avoid this, def this deformation. This is why we have uh, designed the, the support of the tank uh, and the structure which hold the, uh, the, the rest of the elements are built around it. And the tank has, not, uh, has no physical attach to the parts be, uh, beyond it. Uh, and this is why we have designed this, this corner, which uh, are pretty stressed parts. And, uh, and we also make a, a lot of uh, fear analysis uh, about, uh, about that. Uh, second part. Uh, it's the main tank design. This is like the core part of, uh, of the extruder. It's the bigger one and also it's uh, the one of most responsibility because the, the main motor of the main pump uh, can do a torque up to uh, 90 newton meters, which is a, a small car, uh, accelerating at good power. Uh, and uh, But uh, we want to save as much weight as possible. So actually, the, the, so this is why we, we chose a mix of uh, uh, carbon fiber on aramid, which is mostly known as Kevlar. And we also have some fi fiber parts, uh, fi glass fiber parts uh, in, this, in this tank in order to add rigidity. Um, so uh, in, in order to, to get an idea of uh, what have been the, the, the workflow during the design of these parts, uh, this is the first uh, design of, 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 uh, of uh, the, the tank. It looks nothing like uh, the final one, but it looks a lot like many tanks of um, concrete pumps, which were our starting point. Uh, so we designed this part and we figured out very quickly that this part wasn't uh, correct. First of all, because it was too long. Second of all, because one of our main concerns was the movement of the, of the concrete during the printing. And uh, this part is clearly not symmetrical. So uh, an acceleration in uh, the main axis of the, of the tank will create a wave uh, of some size. But the, the, the acceleration on the orthogonal axis will create another wave. So th this will make a uh, complicated uh, strength for the, for the cable robot. Uh, uh, also, there is yeah uh, a very long distance where a very big wave can be can be created. So we skip quickly uh, starting to this point to this uh, to this design, which solved this problem because now all uh, the the acceleration can be done in all direction and the movement in, inside the tank are uh, uh, are e equal in any direction of the of the plane's acceleration during the printing, but. We have another problem. We are trying to uh, save weight. And here we have a bigger part than the last time. And also, this is not the main problem. The main problem is that uh, if we have this flat bottom, then there is, in this case, six liters of concrete that we are not going to be able to print. Six liters of concrete uh, means uh, 15 kilos. Uh, which is ten times the the, the weight of the of the tank, uh, so this was something <laughs> unacceptable for for us, and this is why we end up with this one. Actually, there is a lot of more steps between this one, but I cannot last too long. Uh, and with this one, which uh, have a resting volume much smaller, uh, and the problem that it's very complex part with no plane uh, plane in order to fix the part, and requires a lot of uh, a lot of design for, for coupling to this one. So um, other uh, test and, uh, and qualification that we have to do uh, is, for example, the, the problem is the weight. Uh, but we also have the problem of the, the loss of weight and the movement of the, cent of the gravity center. What I mean is that uh, we have a, a we, unfortunately, anti-gravity systems don't work yet. Uh, so when we are leaving concrete, we are losing weight. 
this is so this will make a displacement in the z axis of the gravity center which we cannot avoid but uh, if the the platform is not perfectly equilibrated then we will also we could also have a move displacement of the gravity center of uh, the platform which will cause the the cable robot to tilt uh, and um, so this is why we, we have designed everything around the main tank and the main tank is the central part uh, of the which caused problem for the tube for example because we could have put it in the front but then uh, the platform will have been disequilibrated and we will uh, add displacements so we made uh, an experimental measurement of the displacement of the gravity center uh, and the the displacements are except in the z position uh, of less than nine centimeters which uh, for us was acceptable and also thanks to Frank Hofer. Okay, so now that uh, I have explained a lot the design, I will just, I wanted to show, uh, first of all, to get an idea of what are the changes uh, during uh, what happened during the, the tank. So this is the, the concrete. Uh, this is the concrete without additive. So this is how it is in the tank. It's like, uh, yeah, it's really, really fun. Um, as I have to get quick. Uh, this is the concrete one additivated. So we just add a few drops of the accelerant and we have a concrete that can withstand itself. So this is pretty much better. Um, uh, to get quick, so to have an idea of what's happening and the complexity of the con control, this is uh, uh, following values of uh, the, um, the pressure sensors and temperature sensors during one real printing of one of the demonstrator. So what we can see is, uh, first of all, that we have a chemical reaction taking place inside this, uh, uh, inside this, uh, this mixer, and that uh, during most of the printing, or during a long time, we are not linear in this reaction because what you are seeing here is are the temperature sensors. Uh, there is one at the enter of the, of the chamber and one at the output. So what, what can we see? We can see uh, this, uh, first of all, this is the one at the, at the enter and this is the one at the output. So uh, this increase of uh, temperature is uh, related to the increase of the pressure of the system. When you increase the pressure, you have, to, you have a heat up, uh, which will, of course, influence the reaction of the concrete. Uh, and this, the difference that caused and the reason why the, the two lines crosses is because uh, during the, the setting, uh, the setting uh, of the concrete, it's an exothermic reaction, and uh, we can see that uh, the, it gets hotter. Uh, so actually, if we would like to be really continuous, we should like pour concrete during eight minutes, and then we are more or less continuous. Um, it's something, of course, that we cannot do, so we have to compensate the values. And here you have the values of the pressure sensor. We can see that we have a, a quick rise uh, as the, the reaction uh, begins uh, of the pressure, and then it gets uh, it's get back uh, a little back. This, uh, this decrease is due because we, we have a, a tank. The ta uh, we have a tank, so the concrete is the same. Uh, it's static, mm, not really static, but uh, it's getting down little by little, but uh, uh, during the whole printing. And uh, the arid elements uh, start to precipitate in the bottom of the, tube, uh, of the tank. So uh, at the, uh, the, the end concrete, <coughs> as less arid than the, than the beginning uh, concrete. And this uh, changed the texotropy of the, of the concrete. This is why we have a decrease of the pressure. And just to end, uh, what I wanted to, to show is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, Ray. This is the end of the printing. And uh, at the end of the printing, of course, we have to stop, move it, and then uh, start cleaning. And the rise that you can see is the rise of pressure during 20 seconds, which um, can give you an idea of the, we are in a really equilibrium, really, really fragile because a few seconds on this, uh, this peak of pressure, which is uh, up to six bar, 
uh, is uh, something that uh, a car, the pressure in the car tires are two bars. So we have three times the, the pressure of a car tires in 20 seconds inside. So it's a big explosion when, it's, uh, when it gets out. Um, that's it. I have some fail to explain you, but uh, I think it's, it's enough. Thank you.